Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Amanda and this is my Reading Rush TBR or formerly known as Booktubeathon. You guys, I love this. I love this readathon. I've been participating in it, in it every year since I started this channel, which was three years ago now, I think. Three years, almost three years, I can't remember. Something like that. I think I'm coming up on my third anniversary this year. So yeah, um, and I love it. So I can't wait to participate. I know I'm a little late to the game because the readathon starts on Monday. I think it goes from Monday the 22nd until Sunday, and I think that's the 28th, I believe. I could be wrong, but I think it's the 28th. If not, I'll flash it across the screen so you guys know. All right, so there are seven prompts, and I'm going to go through those now. Prompt one is to read a book with purple on the cover. I chose How to Walk Away by Catherine Center. Um, there's some purple flowers here and here. Now, I know I have plenty of books on here that have a lot more purple, and I have a couple even in my TBR, actually three or four of them that have purple on the cover, so it would count for this, but I've been meaning to read this for a long time, and when I was looking, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to choose this. I actually just got Lock Every Door by Riley Sager. That book is pretty purple, and I really wanted to switch this one out, but I've been meaning to read this for a really long time. I read the synopsis again, and I was like, you know what? It's a chick lit. I've been reading a lot of thriller and horror right now so this should be a nice break. Um, this follows our main character, I don't know what her name is, but she has like the seemingly perfect life. She's about to marry the love of her life. Everything is kind of falling into place for her and something happens, some kind of a tragedy leaves her life like upside down and she's just trying to figure out how to navigate life after this event. Um, yeah, so I assume it's gonna be sad but I'm really excited. There's a plane on the cover. So I don't know, but I'm, I'm excited to finally pick it up. Prompt two is to read a book in the exact same spot the entire time. Um, this, I took this as it doesn't mean you have to sit there until you finish a book. Like you don't need to read a book in one sitting. You just have to continuously sit in this spot to read said book. So I'm going to do that with any of these. I don't know. I usually read on my couch or outside. So if the weather is cooperative, it has been like Hades here in Michigan. It's been so hot and I don't want to complain because it was so cold for so long but now like we went from like cold to scorching. <laughs> There's like no in between. Actually this weekend it's supposed to be like 100 degrees so yeah. Um, anyway so if it's not too hot I'm going to try to read outside because I need some more color because I am a pale and I've been outside a lot. You can see a little tiny bit of a tan but Mm, not that good. So yeah, I'll just pick one of the six books that I have here. The third prompt is to read a book that you meant to read last year. I mean, look around. I could pick any of these books on any of my shelves because chances are I've had them forever. I've been meaning to read them forever, but I decided to pick Beneath the Sugar Sky by Shauna McGuire. This is the third book in the Wayward Children series. Every Heart of Doorway is the first book, um, and that book is about these children who have um, discovered these portal worlds and have come back from them and they're kind of reeling from that. They're not allowed to go back to their portal world even though that's where they want to be. Um, every child has been to a different world dependent upon what they want or need um, but they can't go back once they come back to um, earth or to the to our world. <laughs> uh, so they are sent to the school to try to become normal again. So that's the first book. I love those books. Um, I've read the first two, this third. Uh, I have the fourth, which is In an Absent Dream. The fifth book comes out, I think, the end of the year. I've already pre-ordered it, so I really need to catch up. So I'm going to take the time to do that. Uh, this also has purple on the cover, so I could use that as well. The fourth prompt is to read an author's first book, and so for that I chose We Set the Dark on Fire. This is by Taylor K. Mija? Mejia? Mejia. Um, I'm probably butchering that so I apologize. I heard about this over at Jocelyn's channel Yogi with a book. Um, she was talking about it like raving about it and I was like you know what I'm gonna buy that. So I did. It's gorgeous. Purple on the cover as well. Um, so basically in this world the political unrest is crazy right? And if you are one of the elite you can afford to send your daughter to this prestigious boarding school. 
at the boarding school, they're going to learn how to become this trophy wife or caregiver. And once they graduate, they'll be married off or given to a family and then they'll be like set for life. They won't have to deal with any of the political rust that's going on. It's kind of be like out of sight, out of mind. Um, and our main character has some dark secrets that could blow up her spot pretty much. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty sure it's about a rebellion though and I'm all for it. I just read a book kind of similar to this and I cannot remember what the hell it's called. It's by Susan, um, Susan Young the author of the program. It's a new release. I can see the cover. I don't know what it's called, but I love that one. This is about boarding school and rebellion, and I just i am here for it. Plus, I have the audiobook of this one. I've heard the audiobook's fantastic, so this next book is going to cover prompts five and six, and those prompts are to read a book with five or more words in the title and to read a book with a non-human main character. So for that, I chose My Favorite Thing is Monsters. This is by Emile Ferris. It is a graphic novel that has some really cool um, pictures. Like it's, everything's drawn on like notebook paper, it looks like. Um, and I heard about this from the Books and Freezer podcast that Stephanie puts on. And um, I love it. Like I, I love that podcast. If you guys like horror, you should definitely go check it out because it's great. But this, I mean, I think it's just about some monsters. And monsters are non-human, right? So I think this will work for that prompt. It is a thick boy okay but it's a graphic novel so I think I should be able to get through it no problem and honestly I'm thinking about when I'm starting to get burnt out from reading so much so quickly I can probably pick this up and read some of it um and it also has five words in the title my favorite thing is monsters so I'm really really excited for this one I've actually meant to be reading this one for a long time and I just have not got it from the library so picked it up gotta read it the seventh and final prompt is to read a book and watch the adaptation. For that, I chose Sharp Objects by Jillian Flynn. Now, this has a TV show adaptation. I believe you're supposed to watch a movie, so I'm cheating just a tiny bit here. Um, but I really want to watch that TV show. I doubt that I'll be able to get through that TV show in a week, especially if I'm trying to read all these books. But I will commit to watching the first two episodes. I'll try to get a third one in there if I can. But I'll at least commit to the first two. I think they're an hour long. That's about as long as a movie, you know. But this book is the only Jillian Flynn that I have not read yet. And if you guys know anything, you know that I love Gone Girl and I love Dark Places even more than Gone Girl. So you know I have to read this one. I also read her little short story last year for Booktubeathon, I believe. Um, and I really like that as well, even though it was like 50 pages, but it was good. Um, so this one follows a reporter who is sent back to her hometown to cover a double homicide of some preteen girls. And I believe when she's there, she starts to uncover some of her family's dark secrets. Uh, she doesn't really like what she's finding. So I am really excited to get to this. Just like I'm excited to get to everything. I keep saying that I need to find some more uh, words to put in my vocabulary. But... Those are all the things that I would like to read this week. I know it's overly ambitious. I don't think I'm going to be able to read uh, six books in a week, especially since I barely read six books in a month these days, but I'm going to give it the good old college try because I love this readathon and I just want to read as much as I can. Um, let me know down below what you guys are reading or link me your TBR so I can go watch them. I've been watching everybody's TBRs. I love watching TBRs for this um, readathon or for any readathon really. Um, so let me know and I will go check it out. If you'd like to be my friend on the Reading Rush website, uh, I'll put my link down below. Feel free. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Goodreads and I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.